Hey, it's Mrs. G, and today we'll be practicing using a biological tool called a Punnett square to help us predict the genotypes and phenotypes of offspring based on their parents' genetics. Let's do it! Okay, first let's review some terminology. A genotype is the combination of two alleles, one from each parent, that an organism houses in its DNA. Let's use the letter G to represent the allele for brown hair. If my mom donates a dominant allele for brown hair, and my dad donates a recessive allele for some other hair color, maybe blonde, then I would have a genotype of capital G, lowercase g. This specific genotype is called heterozygous because my two alleles are not identical, and the prefix hetero means different. If both of my parents were to donate the dominant allele for brown hair, then my genotype would have been capital G, capital G, which is called homozygous dominant because my two alleles are identical, and the prefix homo means same. If my parents had each donated the recessive allele for some other hair color, then my genotype would have been lowercase g, lowercase g, which is a homozygous recessive genotype. Remember, only one dominant allele needs to be present for a trait to show up in the phenotype. So I would have brown hair if I was heterozygous for this trait or homozygous dominant for this trait. A phenotype is the observable outward feature that an organism displays, like brown hair or blue eyes. Now there are two types of Punnett squares depending on how many different traits you're looking at at one time. We will begin by looking at only one trait at a time, and this is called a monohybrid cross. Let's say the trait we're looking at is rose petal colors. Let's say we're crossbreeding a rose with pink petals with a rose with white petals. And for our example, we will make the dominant trait pink and the recessive trait white. Now it doesn't really matter what letter you choose to represent the allele, but I have found that it's smart to choose a letter whose capital and lowercase versions look very different from one another because there's less chance you're going to mix them up when interpreting your results later. For example, the letter P looks similar enough that if I wasn't careful to keep the sizes consistent, I might mix them up. If our pink rose that we're crossbreeding is heterozygous, for our example, then its genotype would be capital R, lowercase r. And if our white rose, for our example, is homozygous recessive, its genotype would be lowercase r, lowercase r. Suppose I want to know what the chances are of getting pink rose offspring. Here's how we would determine that. First, draw a box with four squares in the middle. Then, split up the alleles of one parent and place them each over one box across the top. Split up the alleles for the second parent and place their alleles next to their own box along the left side. It doesn't matter which parent's alleles go where, as long as you keep the alleles that go to the same parent together. Now you're going to fill in the inner boxes with the combination of their alleles. Be sure you always place the capital letter first if there is one. Thank you. 
So what does all this mean? Well, two of the inner boxes have the dominant allele of pink petals, that capital R. And even if there's only one dominant allele present, that's the one that's gonna show up. So in this case, 50% of my offspring are going to have those pink petals. And the other 50% are gonna have white petals. The other type of Punnett square we will look at today deals with two different traits at a time, and it's called a dihybrid cross. Let's keep the rose petal color trait from the last example, and we're also going to use the same letters, so capital R and lowercase r. And now we will add a new trait. I chose rose petal size, and I also chose to use the letter Q for these alleles. So in this case, a large rose petal is gonna be dominant, so capital Q, and a small rose petal will be recessive, so lowercase Q. Let's say the first parent rose in this example is heterozygous for rose petal color, and heterozygous for rose petal size. So its phenotype would be pink petals that are large. Let's say the second parent rose in our example is heterozygous for rose petal color and homozygous recessive for rose petal size. So its phenotype would be pink petals that are small. Dihybrid crosses require an extra step. So first we're gonna line up the parent genotypes And we're going to use something called the FOIL method to determine the allele combination that we'll use for our Punnett square. F stands for first. So we will combine the first of each of the two letters that show up for each parent. For parent one, this would be capital R, capital Q. And for parent two, this would be capital R, lowercase q. O stands for outside, so we will combine the two outer alleles that show up for each parent. For parent one, this will be capital, car, capital R, lowercase q, and parent two will be the same this time. I stands for inside, so we will combine the two inside alleles that show up for each parent. For parent one, this will be lowercase r, capital Q, because we want to keep the first letter consistent each time, so it's okay to put the capital one second. And for parent two, it will be lowercase r, lowercase Q. Finally, L stands for last, so we'll combine the last of each allele that show up for each parent. For parent one, that would be lowercase r, lowercase Q, and for parent two, it's also going to be lowercase r, lowercase q. Okay, now that we have all of the possible allele combinations, we need to draw our Punnett square, but this time it needs to have 16 boxes in the middle instead of four. Be sure your boxes are big enough that you can neatly write four letters in each one. You wouldn't wanna do all of this work and then not be able to interpret your results at the end. 
Just like before, we will place the allele combinations for one parent along the top of the Punnett square and the allele combinations for the other parent along the left side. Now we're ready to fill in the boxes that represent the offspring. Be sure when combining alleles that you always place the same letter first, keep like letters together, and write the capital one first if there is one. I will fill out about half of this Punnett square for you now, then I'll skip to a picture of it completed, so if you're following along at home, you can check your work. And here's that completed version. Feel free to pause the video to check your own work. Let's interpret this. To figure out how many of these offspring will have pink, large petals, we need to count how many boxes have at least one capital R and at least one capital Q. Also, I apologize, I started using the words tall and short instead of large and small, but it should say large and small, so I'm sorry for the confusion here. I counted 6 out of 16 boxes with this combination, and we can reduce that fraction to 3 eighths of the offspring. Now let's do pink petals that are small. So we'll be looking for boxes with at least one capital R, but two lowercase q's, since a small petal is a recessive trait. Once again, I count 6 out of 16 boxes with this combination, which reduces to 3 eighths. Now let's do white petals that are large. We'll be looking for boxes with two lowercase r's, since white is a recessive trait, and at least one capital Q. I count two out of 16 boxes with this combination, which reduces to one eighth. Finally, let's look at white petals that are small. Here we are looking for boxes with all lowercase letters, since both of these traits are recessive. Again, I'm only going to find two out of my 16 boxes that fit this criteria, which reduces to one-eighth of the offspring. Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions about this video or if you're interested in private tutoring in math or science over video or in person in the Kansas City area, please reach out to me via the email on the screen. If this video was helpful, I would also really appreciate you subscribing to my channel. Have a great rest of your day!